that those are beautiful tony braxton thank you for the flowers uh-huh she was on the show yesterday she sent the flowers she gave good talk my parents are in town good morning so i got home yesterday and um they had just landed um so i know they're watching the show right now in our kitchen um my mother's going to be my co-host tomorrow for mother's day um you know the wendy show and trust me it's not oh it's like oh boy this is going to be <laughs> A real scene my mother with the big mouth and she styled herself and and oh, just her wig is ready she wears a wig only oh she wears a wig in fake life not in real life you know um, so her wig is ready she's got her one-liners ready her stories and she's gonna host literally the whole show there's gonna be another chair here for hot topics when we talk to Jill Zarin and Gloria, because they're going to be on the show tomorrow, she's, there's, there's going to be four of us sitting on the couch. It's going to be Ask Wendy and Charlie, the whole bit. So it's going to be fun, mm -hmm. I think. <laughs> <laughs> my biggest dream or my worst nightmare. So, Norman, let's talk about Frank Sinatra night last night on American yes, Idol. Yes, I was inspired. Um, the Rat Pack, I tried to do a little today. Yes. Um, rented. Right very, very nice. Discount. Thank you. What are the sweatbands on your arms? Um, my arms are too long, so I thought I'd cover up the... the I have the too long... <laughs> do you too? I love you, Norman. I love you back. I do those tricks, oh. too. Everything is always... So I like a three-quarter sleeve, because yeah. it's going to be there anyway. The extremities. Because oh. if you buy a big thing, it's so big here, and yeah. I know your pain. And plus, I'm doing the white socks for MJ. Uh-huh, okay. okay. So now let's talk. Harry Connick Jr., everybody mentored last night on American Idol as to how to do that Sinatra thing. I love him. He's amazing. He was so funny, and did everyone yeah. get to see him? So funny, he brought out, like, great personality in Lee, and I think, um, he's a good guy. He's been married for a long time, and right, is he? Is he still married to Jill Goodacre? She used to model for Victoria's Secrets. Oh, that's a good couple. I haven't seen her in years. Remember back in the day, um, Victoria's Secret fans? She was a Victoria's Secret model. And they got married, and you haven't heard a peep from her. She must be really happy. And I like the way he talks. <laughs> Shout out to everybody in New Orleans. He's got a, a... You know what? You need to come to the show, Harry Connick Jr., and yes. bring your wife. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Now, last night on American Idol, which I didn't see, still talking to my parents about my mother's appearance tomorrow, Aaron was sent home. Aaron Kelly. Aaron Kelly, great. He's, I call him the David Archuleta 2.0. I mean, he's, he's 16 <laughs> or 17 or 11, as Ellen called him one week. I mean, he did great. He stayed. But the thing about, I want to say this, Wendy, is people don't realize this. Yes, it's a singing contest, but is it really? I was on there. How you doing? <laughs> it's, a pol it's a political race. He dedicated a song to his mother last week. And I think that let him stay a couple of weeks. That let him weeks. stay. But isn't this kid like 17 years old? 17 years old, and he, he did great, but he is gone. Okay. And now, Lee DeWise. That's who I'm voting for. That, that, look, I'm only, now I'm so confused, because you know I was re originally Team Casey. And Team then Casey, I, Michael Bolton Jr. Yeah, exactly, Michael Bolton Jr. And I still think that he has a future, it's just it's going to be without my vote, because then... <laughs> Then he messed up a couple times, so then I was with Bower Socks, because I'm a fair-weathered uh, American Idol watcher. I blow like the wind to the next person. But Bower Socks is being too cocky, and I yes. understand that this Lee um, is the front runner. Right. Bower so Socks I'm riding. gives it back, Wendy. Yeah. She's always like, oh, Simon, I think it was like, I mean, I love her, but she's got to be political, Bower Socks, if you want to win this thing. They say she's talking back to the judges. Well, and I have a an little inside... too sassy. And I have an inside scoop that there is sassy... Okay. okay, I don't want to well, talk. Well, Lee is going but... to win, and uh, next week, Big Mike will be sent home. Really? In my mind. Well, maybe. You know what, Wendy, if Casey James gets sent home, I can't wait to see the interview with you and Casey James, so I hope he gets sent home. So oh, yeah. Oh, no, he will be sent home, because I told you, Lee is going to win. They're all going to be sent home. Lee is going to win. <laughs> but I want to see him with okay. you. Okay, so the, the American Idol, one more thing about Idol. Okay, so they have this top ten summer tour, and, and or, you know, and I have, I've been too embarrassed to ask the kids what they make, because I have a feeling they don't even know what they're going to make, but I know that you know what they're going to make. So they're out on tour for the summer, three months. How much do they make? I have no clue. I never got the contract, but I will say... Oh, okay. I did. Um, and I might get sued for this, but I'm going to just ballpark, allegedly. They do 45 shows. Okay. You make about two to three Gs a show. Okay. You get T-shirts. You get merchandising. Oh. You get iTunes. Your life changes if you get on this tour. Yes. Very nice. So, I mean, it's, it's a good deal. It's a good deal. It's not Adam Lambert money, but it's a good deal. It's a good deal. <laughs> Look, good idle tea as usual, and thank you, Norman. For more information uh, about Norman's uh, opinions on American Idol, and he dishes real good, he blogs and all, go to wendyshow.com. Very nice. Uh-huh. <laughs>
Oh. Now look. Speaking of American Idol, I want you to know that Usher is piping up, saying that uh, basically he does not approve of American Idol and these the karaoke type contests. BET.com is where the comments were made. Um, he says uh, these comments about this season, which by the way, he was a mentor on American Idol because I was there that week. So he went for the purpose of promoting his own CD. And now that he's promoted it, he's talking about Idol. And what he's saying is that the true art form of music is being lost because it seems so easy that everyone can do it. Television is a lie. I can't, it can't happen overnight. He says, the artist who goes and thinks that it just happens overnight just comes and goes. They don't understand the full gamut of what it is to be an entertainer. Now, what I will say is that Personally, I agree with Usher, but Usher, this is the way entire society is going. Hello, this is why uh, a Snooki has a TV show and Christina Applegate doesn't. You know, th this is why, you know, actors get mad at reality shows and, and the situation is a bigger star than, you know, and then you fill in the blank. It, it just happens that way. Society is cheapened and, 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 and so what, Usher? I mean, the kids will be groomed, but I understand what you're saying. By the way, Usher is also being called out for um, his, by his former uh, producer and friend, Jermaine Dupree. Jermaine Dupree, um, as you know, is that on again, off again, Janet Jackson um, thing. And Jermaine has done some really good work for Usher in the past. This is what he told Vibe Magazine Jermaine did. He says, I didn't really want to be executive producer of Usher's uh, project after Confessions, which was the name of his uh, CD back then. It's kind of hard for me to go back into people's projects when I gave you your biggest album ever, and now I have to ask you, am I gonna executive produce your next album? That seems disrespectful to me. Well, it could be taken as disrespect, Jermaine. Um, Confessions was his biggest album, Usher's, and yes, Jermaine was the brains behind it, but that was five years ago. It's more like, what have you done lately? Uh, you know? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, you guys. P.S. Jermaine is also feeling the same way about Mariah Carey. Mariah Carey and Jermaine Dupree are a, a great tag team in terms of music. But, and, and when, when he helped her with um, Emancipation of Mimi, which was um, years ago, that sold more albums than any other album in Mariah's career. And the last album, which was just a moment ago that Mariah put out, well, it's no secret, it bombed. And Jermaine had nothing to do with the album. And, you know, but what if, what'd you do for your girlfriend, though? On again, off again, Janet. See, Janet put out a product since Emancipation of Mimi and Confessions with Usher, and Janet's album did absolutely nothing. So, if they might have been looking at that, Jermaine, like, you know, look what you did for your girlfriend. You, you would think she would have gotten the best, you would have think, thought that she would have gotten the best material, number one. And number two, Jermaine, you're a great producer, but maybe they were going for a different sound. And apparently it didn't work as well as they thought. But, you know, anyway, moving on. So, the magazine In Touch Weekly um, is talking about Kate Gosling. I know, I know, I know. I hate talking about her also. I'm tired of her, but... You know, when stories come up that I think that you'd be interested in, you know, I like to bring them to you. So there's Kate. And they're talking about roughly how much money she's raking in these days. Because we like to know those things here on Hot Topics, right? Okay. So, first of all, you know Kate is doing two reality shows. She's all signed up. The ink is dried on the paper for TLC. She's getting roughly $700,000, allegedly, according to In Touch Weekly, for both of these shows combined. So $700,000 for two shows. She got, they say, about $200,000 for being on Dancing with the Stars. And since Kate has been cut, which just happened a moment ago, uh, the ratings for Dancing with the Stars have gone down. And they normally don't announce who they're going to bring back for that bring back week that they do, but they're, they're announcing it this time because they need you to watch. Kate's coming back for the bring back week. They say in total that Kate will earn around $1 million in this year, 2010. In the meantime, that man, her baby's father, um, <laughs> and ex-husband John, is unemployed and has practically no money going on. So here's the thing. 
Kate lives in a million plus house with the eight kids uh, there in Pennsylvania. And John apparently dumped his very, very pricey apartment rental here in New York because he can't afford it at the Trump. And he's living around the corner from Kate, you know, in like, I guess, you know, a studio walk up or something uh, there in Pennsylvania. So whenever he goes over to the house to take care of the kids or help out or borrow money or, or eat something, <laughs> If it's an overnight stay, he sleeps on the couch. Now, you have to figure, with eight children, the couch is probably the only place to sleep. There's a, there's a nanny's room. You have to, she's got to sleep. She's, she ain't sleeping with Kate. And, and so he sleeps on the couch. So big deal, because you could always drive right around the corner and sleep at your house. But this is what I'm saying. The question to you is, since Kate is now the breadwinner, should she pay John alimony? Well, by a show of hands, girls, should she pay uh, alimony? Guys, you too, I'm sorry. I don't mean to leave you out. All right, nobody thinks, a, a couple of people think alimony. You're with me then, most of you, because I don't think that she should pay him alimony. This is what I think that she needs to do. First of all, she needs to be a lady, no matter how much she can't stand this no money making loser that he's turned out to be in terms of, you know, he can't even get a job in IT. He's been applying for jobs, but he can't even get a job. I think that she needs to silently slip him money every time she comes to do things for the kids. She doesn't need to pull out a wad of cash and give it to him so the kids see that disrespect. The kids haven't been to Great Adventure in three months, John. You know, here's $500, take them there, have a great time, and so on and so forth. Bring me back the receipts, and I want my change. Mm -hmm. And P.S. This is the piece de resistance of the Kate, because you guys forget that Kate didn't always look like Kate. She used to look like a stranger. So the first picture I want to show, <laughs> look, Deb Miller, the first picture I want to show, she's my director, is, uh, why am I looking up like this? <laughs> she's not even up there. How you doing, Deb? <laughs> ha, ha. Look, Deb, show, me, show us the pregnancy picture of Kate. It, can you, yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh. Do you see what she looks like? Now, now, show me the, uh-huh, uh uh-huh, good, uh-huh, see, there's the belly. But bring that close-up back up, and then show us the other, now show us Kate today. That's some good tasteful plastic surgery, right? That, that's, that, that's good. Kate, I don't even recognize her, right? That's good. And the funny thing is, you guys, you'll accept this from Kate, but you won't accept it from Heidi Montag. But you want to know why? Because Heidi's only 23 years old. This was a, a, a sorely needed, apparently, mommy makeover. <laughs> and Heidi is something else. Look, you guys, we're going to take a break. Mm -hmm. We're going to take a break. Uh, we have got more juicy hot topics coming up. We're going to talk about Miley Cyrus and the sexy new direction her life is going. Uh, ask you guys what you think. Of course, we have pictures to go along with it. You be here. I'll be here, too. We'll be back. It's a Wednesday. So our next guest experienced all kinds of drama as Drusilla Barber on the long-running soap opera, The Young and the Restless. Now, since then, she's become a best-selling author, and her book, Secrets of a Soap Opera Diva, is a perfect beach read for this summer. Please welcome to the show, Victoria Rowell. <laughs> Twirl again. Twirl again. Okay. I'm just saying. Hi. I had no idea when they told me that this morning while I was getting hair and makeup, I was gagging. Uh, were you? I'm going to take off my diva hat. Uh, yeah, uh, yes. Because my fans know that I wear a hat every day. And Do you? Hey, the lucky one gets the hat. Oh, it matches your outfit. It matches your outfit. Oh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> So, look at she ain't wearing skin. that hat. Wait, <laughs> your skin is flawless. It's, it's pretty good skin. It's really good skin. Yeah, yeah. They say yeah. good black don't crack, but yes, it does. Yes, it we've does. seen some of, care of it. We've seen some of our sisters whose skin cracks and yeah. stuff. I have an appreciation for that. Okay, let, please, we only okay. have a moment. Let's oh, talk. God. Yeah, let's. All right, first of all, I'm taking you in. 
What made you decide to wear this? Diva Down. This is soap opera Diva Down. Now, anyone who watches daytime, we're in sequins, boa feathers, and watch out. Okay. Hair for days and lashes. Deb Miller, do you uh, by any chance have the picture of the kooky Obama dress that Victoria wore on the red carpet? Oh, Can we just fab. put that in? Can we just, uh-huh. Oh, uh -huh. that, oh, it's one of my favorites. Really? Yes. Yes. Now, I understand that the president, when he was running, he needed support. What red carpet were you on with that dress? I was on the Emmy, the primetime Emmy carpet. But you know, it was because of my foster care background, and I knew that we needed medical reformation. And so I said, you know what? The president's getting all kinds of heat. I'm not going to go in bubbles and feathers. I'm going to go in an Obama dress and say, yes, we need medical care for all Americans. Especially our foster youth. Because we have, what, 30,000 kids emancipating from foster care, Wendy, every year. Let's, I said, i got to step for let's my Let's talk about it. The reason that she's speaking about foster care is because Victoria um, was raised in the foster system from infant to 18. That's correct. How many families do you think you were... Uh, five. Five different families? There was five families, including American Ballet Theater here, Wendy, when I was 17, living on my own, believe Look it or not. Look at you. And I have to do a shout-out to American Ballet Theater. Thank you for loving me up. Because it was tough. All right, okay, <laughs> there, there's a lot going on. There's so much, you know, I really, you're my kind of girl. I know, Wendy. Yeah, no, no. Wendy, I love you. Because I've got a bit of this. Yeah. And you clearly have got a bit of this. But you know what? This is good. Is creativity. Uh -huh. High five. It's good. It's good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, little leg, little leg. Okay, little leg. Just a little, just a peek. Okay. <laughs> we were talking about you here, Victoria, on Hot Topics several weeks ago uh -huh. because um, the word on the street was that you were going to be on Real Housewives of Atlanta. Did you see Nene back Stop there? Stop it. I saw Nene and we hugged because we've done book signings together in the past. Have you? And I heard about, wait, and I heard about the Atlanta housewife. She's picking up all the tips. This yeah, well, quick study. not going to have cook me. You know, I just thought, well, okay, you can have it. But I will say that I think the Atlanta Housewives is fabulous. Uh-huh. But I might be a recurring housewife. You never know. Bravo's talking. Who wants to see that? <laughs> we do. This is a great introduction to exactly what we think. Okay. Okay, so you're married. Married. And you know what? I got married last year. It's Come never too late, ladies. Is that, your, is that your first marriage? It's my second marriage. Okay. Okay, here's your, your husband. What's his name? How did you meet him? Radcliffe Orville Bailey. Because it's hard to meet a single man in Atlanta. Sam Jackson's wife, Latanya Jackson, incredible actress in her own right, and she introduced me, and she said, Vicki, I'm going to introduce you to your husband. You're welcome. And walked away. And I married him. And was this at the Jackson compound in L.A.? It was actually at the National Black Arts Festival in Atlanta. I was on my book tour, and I saw this fine man coming yes. across the piazza at the High Museum. And I said, who is that? He's got a body like Obama. Oh, he's got a got, fabulous body. Did, did you notice body. that, you guys? It's like, from the neck down, it's oh. like Obama. Oh. Long well, and Well, I don't know that to be all true. Okay. Oh. <laughs> okay. Now, I want to look. I, I just, I'm, you know, I don't know. What? I oh. love you. <laughs> Where are you? Do you? So you live in Atlanta I'm now? I'm from Maine. I'm a farmer. Yeah, I know there's 11 Where did that come from? In Maine. Well, because you said, where are you from? And I thought you were going to go from. Okay. Mm -mm. Okay. So where do you live now? You live in Atlanta? Between Atlanta and Hollywood. Are you going to be in Atlanta tomorrow night? I'm not, no, Wendy. Just asking. Why? Because I is. Ooh. Oh, you mean we could have had trouble? We could have like had fun and I'm scared. Okay. Let's talk about your let's talk about the family that you've created because yes. no, seriously, what you <laughs> have to understand is is that she has a beautiful life. There's her husband, and now who is the white girl? That's that is my biological 20-year-old daughter. What? Yes. 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 You pushed her out? I mean, this is your daughter. Right here at Lenox Hill Hospital. I sure did. I sure did. And she's my daughter. Okay. In the black community, we, we always, there's this thing, and Jewish people, you might be the same way, Italian people. In the black community, no matter how light or how ambiguous, mm -hmm. we always know one another. Yep. I would not have known your daughter to be black. You would when she would do this. How you doing, Wendy? Oh! <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Listen. Please don't go anywhere. Oh. 
We're going to take a break, and when we come back, we're going to talk more with our new friend, Victoria Rowell. I'm not an actress. <laughs> She's talking about you have to be in a movie. She has to be in the movie. Look, we're back, and we're getting such good talk from our friend Victoria Rowell. A couple of things. First of all, her bio son, um, other than the light-skinned girl, you, she has a son, <laughs> and the baby's Jasper. father, Jasper, is uh, Wynton Marsalis' son, and they get along very well co-parenting. Yeah. Oh, yes. Um, also, Victoria uh, hasn't been on The Young and the Restless for the past three years. That's right. Would you like to go back? Oh, I'd love to go back. If they I, asked you? I would claw right back up that cliff, Wendy. <laughs> right on back. Okay. Oh, yeah, we claw back up a cliff. I love your book cover. You have got such good bone structure. Look at that. Thank you. Oh, wow. That's sexy. Secrets of a Soap Opera Diva. What is, a, what is this book all about? What is going on in here? Oh, it's about an actress of color from Greenwood, Mississippi, and makes her way out to Hollywood land, and she takes a soap opera in Hollywood by the title of the Rich and the Ruthless Ooh. by Storm. Her stage name is Ruby Stargazer, and there's a lot of fights, and there's a lot of love, and there's a lot of sex, and there's a lot of... Mm. Is Ruby Stargazer loosely based on anybody sitting on the couch, not me? <laughs> Thinly veiled, yes. Uh-huh. Mm. 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 So, this is another great beach read for the summer. Oh, juicy, gossipy, I think perfect. Oh. I, someone might even get a sunburn reading that because it's a page turner. Can't put it down. Look, I, you don't have to sell me on anything okay. about you. Don't you love her? <laughs> Thank you, Wendy. I understand that prior to coming here, you were a big fan. You watched the show a lot, and you requested one thing. It. You. Yes. And then you requested that you wanted the diva fan. Yes, Wendy. Well, we, we brought it out for you. Oh, no, you didn't. Yes, we did. Oh, my God. Hit it. Uh-huh. Oh.